In ancient weaponry, few relics evoke the same sense of awe and fascination as the legendary Epsilon Axe. Named for its striking resemblance to the Greek letter Epsilon, this remarkable battle axe once reigned supreme in the hallowed lands of the ancient Middle East, particularly in the illustrious realm of ancient Egypt. Crafted with unparalleled skill and wielded by warriors of valor, the Epsilon Axe commands a profound presence in the grand narrative of ancient warfare. In this exploration, we delve into the mystique that enshrouds this weapon, unraveling its intricate design, unique utility on the battlefield, and its historical significance. The hallmark of the Epsilon Axe lies in its unique construction, showcasing the skillful craftsmanship of ancient weapon makers. Typically crafted from bronze or copper, the axe head was meticulously shaped and tempered for effectiveness in battle. Unlike other axe designs of its time, the Epsilon Axe employed tangs, projecting metal parts of the blade as connectors to the haft. This secure attachment, reinforced by lashings, ensured the axe head remained firmly affixed to the haft during combat. Moreover, the blade's attachment at three points, top, middle, and bottom, enhanced structural integrity, a departure from conventional axe designs. Despite its unique construction, the Epsilon axe faced limitations in combat effectiveness. Its inability to penetrate armor effectively rendered it most suitable against weakly armored or unarmored foes. Additionally, lacking a dedicated point for thrusting limited its versatility in combat scenarios requiring precision strikes. However, in battles against lightly protected adversaries, the Epsilon Axe's swift and powerful swings capitalized on its unique structure. Historical depictions suggest the Epsilon Axe may have been wielded as a one-handed weapon, enhancing its versatility on the battlefield. Paired with a shield, it offered a balanced offense-defense strategy for ancient Egyptian warriors. Furthermore, comparisons to the Kopesh, a renowned weapon of ancient Egypt, reveal distinctions in their significance and potential use. While the Kopesh may have been reserved for elite forces, the Epsilon Axe likely found its place among less prestigious infantry, reflecting the varied roles within ancient Egyptian armies. The Epsilon Axe stands as a testament to the ingenuity and adaptability of ancient weaponry. Despite its limitations, its historical significance underscores its relevance in ancient warfare. The comparison to the Kopesh and its depiction alongside shields shed light on the diverse strategies employed by ancient Egyptian infantry. Overall, this was a highly effective axe that shaped warfare for centuries. In the vast tapestry of ancient Egyptian weaponry, one particular instrument stands out with straightforward elegance the straight one-handed bronze sword from the New Kingdom. This unassuming yet formidable weapon played a pivotal role during a significant period in Egypt's rich history. The New Kingdom marked a time of resurgence and imperial expansion for ancient Egypt. It was an era characterized by military conquests, pharaonic grandeur, and the flourishing of art and culture. The straight bronze sword, a product of this dynamic epoch, embodies the martial spirit and technological advancements of the time. The length of the sword reveals a compact design optimized for one-handed use. Unlike its sickle-shaped counterparts like the Kopesh, the straight sword followed a more conventional design, akin to the swords of other contemporary civilizations. Its straight blade, though lacking the distinctive curvature of the Kopesh, offered advantages in precision and versatility. Crafted from bronze, a testament to the metallurgical prowess of ancient Egyptian artisans, this sword exemplifies the fusion of practicality and artistry. The choice of bronze as the primary material ensured a balance between durability and weight, providing warriors with a reliable and agile weapon on the battlefield. The bronze sword, though not as iconic as the Kopesh, showcases the adaptability of ancient Egyptian arms manufacturing to meet the diverse needs of their military campaigns. While the Kopesh had a niche role in close combat and symbolic significance, the straight sword catered to a broader range of tactical scenarios. Its straightforward design allowed for thrusting, slashing and parrying with relative ease. The length of the blade, combined with a one-handed grip, afforded warriors agility in single combat and the flexibility to employ shields or other secondary weapons. Archaeological finds and artistic depictions 
offer glimpses into the prevalence of straight swords during the New Kingdom. Murals, reliefs and tomb paintings depict soldiers and pharaohs wielding these straight-edged weapons, underscoring their ubiquity in the military landscape of ancient Egypt. Such representations also provide valuable insights into the combat techniques and strategies employed by Egyptian warriors. The New Kingdom's military expeditions into neighbouring lands, including Nubia and the Levant, likely contributed to the dissemination of these straight swords across the ancient world. The exchange of military technologies and tactics during this period facilitated the cross-cultural pollination of weaponry, enriching the arsenals of various civilizations. As with many artifacts from ancient Egypt, the significance of the straight bronze sword extended beyond its utilitarian purpose. Symbolically, it represented the martial prowess and authority of the Egyptian pharaohs. Pharaohs depicted in ceremonial regalia and wielding straight swords in various artistic representations projected an image of strength and dominion over both earthly and divine realms. In conclusion, the straight one-handed bronze sword from the New Kingdom stands as a testament to the martial and technological achievements of ancient Egypt. Its compact design, crafted from bronze, and its prevalence in depictions of military life during the New Kingdom highlight its practicality and cultural significance. While lacking the flamboyance of the Kopesh, the straight sword remains an essential chapter in the saga of ancient Egyptian weaponry, illustrating the adaptability and sophistication of a civilization that left an undeniable mark on the sands of time. In ancient Egyptian warfare, the advent of the composite bow marked a revolutionary stride in military technology. As the horse and chariot made their debut on the Egyptian battlefield, so did this powerful and compact bow, ushering in a new era of strategic possibilities. Before the introduction of the composite bow, Egyptians relied on bows crafted from wood. While functional, these wooden bows posed limitations in the context of chariot warfare. Wooden bows required a certain length for effectiveness, making them unwieldy on the tight platform of a chariot. The composite bow's short length made it highly suitable for chariot combat, where space constraints demanded a compact yet formidable weapon. The composite materials and unique shape of the bow contributed to its exceptional power and efficiency. The bow's construction used composite materials, wood, horn, and sinew. The process begins with wood as the core, jointed to achieve the desired angles. Then, strips of horn, sourced from water buffalo, are layered onto the wood. The horn provides the bow with strength, acting as the muscles of the weapon. To further enhance the bow's power, sinew from oxen is used. The sinew is meticulously processed, creating strands as fine as hair. These strands are then glued around the horn and wood, forming multiple layers. The sinew, like tendons in the human body, holds the bow together and imparts resilience. The glue used in this intricate process is derived from the dried swim bladders of fish producing a viscous adhesive that binds the layers seamlessly. The composite bow's construction is a meticulous art, with the laying of sinew playing a crucial role. Layers upon layers of sinew are applied, each contributing to the bow's strength and flexibility. The result is a compact yet immensely powerful weapon capable of delivering lethal force on the battlefield. The introduction of the composite bow reshaped the dynamics of Egyptian warfare during the New Kingdom. Its power and efficiency empowered Egyptian charioteers to engage in hit-and-run tactics, contributing to the expansion of the Egyptian Empire. The composite bow stands as a testament to the ingenuity of ancient Egyptian craftsmen and their ability to harness technology to gain a strategic edge in the theatre of war. The Kopesh, a distinctive sickle-shaped sword, stands as an iconic symbol of ancient Egyptian warfare. This unique weapon, with its characteristic curved blade, played a pivotal role in the military strategies of the time and left an undeniable mark on history. The weapon's design exhibits a pronounced inside curve, a feature that serves a dual purpose in battle. The Kopesh's curvature enabled its wielder to deftly pull an opponent's shield out of the way, paving the path for a decisive strike. 
The transition from bronze to iron during the New Kingdom period marked a significant technological advancement for the Kopesh. This shift in materials mirrored broader developments in ancient metallurgy, enhancing the durability and effectiveness of the weapon on the battlefield. The earliest known depiction of a Kopesh is found on the Staley of the Vultures, showcasing King Ayanatum of Lagash wielding the weapon. This historical artifact, dating back to at least 2500 BC, provides a tangible link to the ancient origins of the Kopesh. The blade of the Kopesh is sharpened exclusively on the outer portion of the curved end, a design that highlights its distinct ancestry from epsilon or similar crescent-shaped axes used in earlier warfare. This unique blade configuration contributed to the Kopesh's effectiveness in close combat, allowing for precise strikes and versatile maneuvering. Despite its prominence in the tales of ancient Egyptian warfare, the Kopesh fell out of common use around 1300 BC. However, its legacy endured beyond its heyday, as evidenced by the 196 BC Rosetta Stone, where it is referenced as the sword determinative in hieroglyphs. The inscription on the Rosetta Stone, mentioning the setting up of a statue with a royal sword of victory, reflects the symbolic significance attributed to the Kopesh even in later periods. Numerous depictions of pharaohs wielding the Kopesh adorn historical records, emphasizing its association with royal authority and military prowess. Archaeological discoveries, such as the two examples found in Tutankhamun's royal graves, further underscore the cultural and ceremonial importance attached to this distinctive weapon. One intriguing aspect of the Kopesh is the variation in blade sharpness observed in archaeological specimens. While some examples exhibit sharpened edges, others feature dull edges, suggesting that certain Kopeshes found in high-status graves may have served ceremonial rather than functional purposes. This dual nature of the Kopesh adds a layer of complexity to our understanding of its role in ancient Egyptian society. In conclusion, the Kopesh, with its sickle-shaped elegance and battlefield utility, remains an enduring symbol of ancient Egyptian martial prowess. From its humble origins as a crescent-shaped axe to its evolution into a finely crafted iron sword, the Kopesh left an undeniable mark on the military history of the ancient world. Its legacy, preserved in art, inscriptions, and archaeological finds, continues to captivate and illuminate the rich tapestry of ancient Egyptian civilization. The enchanting Duxbill Axe provides a fascinating glimpse into ancient weaponry with its distinctive design. Originating in Egypt, the weapon quickly spread throughout the known world, with some famous examples being found in the Canaanite lands. Crafted predominantly in Syria-Palestine during the Middle Bronze Age, the Duxbill Axe coexisted alongside the 12th dynasty of Egypt, spanning from the northern reaches of Anatolia to the lush expanses of the Nile Delta in the south. Archaeological findings bear testament to the widespread use of such axes, with a particularly noteworthy discovery unearthed in the late 12th dynasty stratum at Tel El Daba, ancient Avaris, nestled within the Nile Delta, a region that bore witness to the influx of Asiatic peoples during the Middle Kingdom, eventually culminating in the establishment of the capital city of the Hyksos dynasty. In a departure from the conventional Egyptian axe construction, the Duxbill Axe, stands out with its distinctive features. Rather than sporting a series of small binding holes, it boasts a large socket designed to snugly receive the haft. This departure from tradition underscores the unique characteristics of the Asiatic axe type, setting it apart from its Egyptian counterparts. Despite its seemingly modest cutting edge, the duck's bill axe harbors formidable power within its narrow frame. The concentrated force generated by its weighty swing could prove devastating, potentially dealing a lethal blow with a single decisive strike. The historical context surrounding the Duxbill Axe offers intriguing insights into ancient military dynamics. The absence of substantial armor and helmets among Egyptian soldiers until the advent of the New Kingdom era amplifies the significance of this weapon. In an era where battlefield protection was scant, the Duxbill Axe emerged as a formidable game-changer. Its ability to deliver precise, forceful blows capable of turning the tide of ancient warfare. 
It stands to reason that weapons like the Duxbill Axe might have played a pivotal role in driving the adoption of heavier armour during the Bronze Age. In conclusion, the Duxbill Axe emerges as a captivating chapter in the annals of ancient weaponry, its distinctive silhouette and functional design serving as a testament to the cross-cultural exchanges of the time. From its production in Syria-Palestine during the Middle Bronze Age to its coexistence with the 12th Dynasty in Egypt, this weapon embodies the convergence of diverse influences. The archaeological evidence, epitomized by the discovery at Tel El Daba, underscores its role in shaping ancient military strategies. Though antiquated, the Duck's Bill Axe continues to resonate with us, its historical legacy echoing through the corridors of time. The Egyptian Fan Axe, a fascinating relic of ancient weaponry, evokes images of fantasy realms with its unique and intricate design. Contrary to its fantastical appearance, this weapon indeed existed in ancient Egypt, as evidenced by various wall carvings and inscriptions. The distinctive feature of the Egyptian Fan Axe lies in its blade, which resembles a fan with points oriented downward. The blade, often single-edged and beveled, showcases the craftsmanship and creativity of ancient Egyptian weapon makers. While the design is captivating, it raises questions about its practicality on the battlefield. Unlike the more utilitarian mace axe, the fan axe's elaborate design suggests a specialized purpose, one that goes beyond the rigors of combat. The evidence supporting the existence of the fan axe comes from depictions on walls and inscriptions in ancient Egyptian tombs and temples. These artistic representations showcase warriors wielding this fantastical weapon in ceremonial or symbolic contexts. The absence of depictions featuring the fan axe in actual combat situations strengthens the argument that it was more likely a ceremonial implement than a standard battlefield weapon. One must consider the impracticalities of the fan axe for combat purposes. The downward facing points of the fan like blade while visually striking, pose challenges in terms of functionality on the battlefield. In the chaos of combat, such a design might prove cumbersome, limiting the effectiveness of strikes and making it less versatile than more conventional weapons. As warriors sought efficient and reliable tools for warfare, it is improbable that the fan axe found a place in their arsenal for practical use. The ceremonial significance of the fan axe is further emphasized by its ornate and intricate design. The attention to detail, coupled with the use of precious materials, suggests that this weapon held a special place in religious or ritualistic practices. It might have been used in processions, religious ceremonies, or other symbolic events where its fantastical appearance could make a powerful impression, serving a more symbolic than functional role. In conclusion, while the Egyptian fan axe may resemble a creation from the realms of fantasy, its existence is grounded in the historical evidence found in ancient Egyptian artwork. Despite its intriguing design, the practicality of this weapon for battle is dubious. Instead, the fan axe likely served a ceremonial or symbolic purpose, adding a touch of mystique to the cultural and religious practices of ancient Egypt. As we delve into the mysteries of ancient civilizations, the Fan Axe stands as a testament to the intersection of practicality and symbolism in the evolution of weaponry. The ancient Egyptian Mace Axe stands as a testament to the ingenuity and practicality of ancient weaponry. In the realm of Egyptian warfare, this unique weapon played a crucial role offering a combination of blunt force and cutting power. Its design, featuring a rounded ball-shaped head with a sharp blade attached, made it a formidable tool on the battlefield. The primary purpose of the ancient Egyptian mace axe was to deliver powerful blows capable of smashing through shields and armor. The rounded head, often made of hard stone or metal, provided a weighty impact surface. This design allowed warriors to generate significant force with their swings, making it effective against the protective gear of their adversaries. The inclusion of a sharp blade on one side of the mace added versatility to its functionality. While the blunt force of the mace was ideal for crushing through defenses, 
The blade offered the capability to cut through materials that required a more refined approach. This dual-purpose design made the mace axe a well-rounded weapon, suitable for various combat situations. On the battlefield, Egyptian warriors wielding the mace axe could target both armoured opponents and shields with confidence. The forceful blows from the rounded head could dent or break through shields, leaving adversaries vulnerable to subsequent attacks. Moreover, the sharp blade could exploit gaps in armour, providing a means to incapacitate or defeat adversaries with enhanced protection. In addition to its effectiveness in direct combat, the ancient Egyptian mace axe symbolised prowess and craftsmanship of the Egyptian civilization. Crafted with skill and attention to detail, these weapons represented the technological advancements of their time. The choice of materials for the mace's head, often utilising durable stones like basalt or metals like bronze, demonstrated the Egyptians' understanding of the importance of sturdy construction in the heat of battle. The mace axe's design also reflected the strategic thinking of Egyptian warriors, recognising the need for a weapon that could adapt to different battlefield scenarios they embraced a combination of blunt and cutting elements. This adaptability made the mace axe a valuable asset, allowing warriors to respond effectively to the challenges posed by various adversaries and their defensive measures. In conclusion, the ancient Egyptian mace axe stands out as a distinctive and effective weapon in the tales of ancient warfare. Its rounded, ball-shaped head, coupled with a sharp blade, provided warriors with a tool capable of smashing through shields and armor. Beyond its practical utility, the mace axe symbolized the craftsmanship and strategic thinking of the Egyptian civilization. As a key component of their military arsenal, it played a vital role in shaping the outcomes of ancient Egyptian battles.